You know, you don't have to go to church and you don't have to be around believers to hear somebody say that God is love. And you know what? Yeah, this is biblical. Right here, 1 John 4 and 8, we read, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. Okay, so this statement is biblical, but I'm convinced that what the majority of people think this verse means is not biblical. You see, we don't define God by what we think love is. On the contrary, we define love by who God is. The verse says God is love. It doesn't say love is God. God is the definition of love. He is a standard we should use to judge if something is truly love. So when somebody tries to justify some sin they're committing by saying God is love, they're already contradicting themselves. Because God is love, but God hates sin, and he's angry with the wicked every day. Whenever someone says love whoever you want, or love is love, what are they really saying? All they're really saying is their definition of love is what love is. They're just affirming their arbitrary opinion without even defining it. But when we say God is love, we are defining what love is. We're defining love by God's character. The way God acts is called love. You know, but it's not hard to fish out what the world considers love to be. It's pretty much whoever you have a sexual attraction to and spend a lot of time with. But lust is the foundation of what the world calls love. You know, we use the word love so loosely that it loses its ability for any definitive usage. People say they love someone because they're in a sexual relationship, but then they break up and they never talk again. Was that really what love is? And many people feel they can't love someone unless they're in a sexual relationship or unless they're family. This is why there's so much confusion because lust has been exchanged for love. Anything that is sinful is harmful, physically, mentally, and spiritually. So if somebody is willing to sin and cause somebody else to sin so they can obey their lust, that is not love. That is a selfish act that is saying, give me what I want now and I'll deal with the consequences later. But you aren't just doing this to yourself, you're also doing this to the person you're in an ungodly relationship with claiming to love them, but in the long run, you're doing them harm, and love doesn't harm. If you had a child that loved heroin, would you shoot them up with heroin every day just so they could be happy? Would that be love? No. God is love, and God protects. Encourages someone to sin, places them in danger. And here's God's word confirming what love is. Right here in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. We see here that love does not boast and is not proud. What do we see from the proponents of the LGBT? We see boasting and pride. As a matter of fact, the slogan of their movement is pride. If God is love and he condemns pride, then what we see from this movement is not love. Verse 5 says love does not dishonor, but we dishonor ourselves by sinning. And by encouraging others to sin, we encourage them to dishonor themselves. It also says love is not self-seeking. But well, what do we hear from these God is love protesters? I can love whoever I want. It's self-seeking at the expense of the honor and safety of others. Then it says love is not easily angered. Take some time to look at some videos of these people who are claiming to be promoting love and see how easily they're angered when confronted with the truth. In verse 6, we also see that love does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in truth. Once again, we see rejoicing in wrongdoing. God has defined homosexuality as wrongdoing in his word. Right here in 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites. Also, in verse 6, it says that love rejoices in truth, denying and going against the obvious structure of nature 
and of our nature is the opposite of rejoicing in truth. Right here in Romans 1.26, For this cause God gave them up into vile affections, for even the women did exchange the natural use into which is against nature. You know, denying God causes you to go against the truth, the truth of our nature. Denying God causes us to live a lie, and God hates lies. Another thing we know about God is He is a God of justice. If someone does something wrong to one of your loved ones, it would not be a loving thing if you do not pursue justice. God has given us statutes and defined what is wrong. If God did not give justice for wrongdoing, he would not be loving. You know, but we live in a culture where people don't want the truth. They don't like solid facts. They want as much confusion as possible and relativism so they can muddy the waters and escape the truth of God's word. As Christians, we can't fall for it. We can't give up the definition of love to the world. God is love and he defines love, not the world. Yes, God is love. But God is also holy. Yes, God is love. But God is also just. Love has to be defined by the foundation that is built upon it. And we cannot give up the foundation of God's word. Psalm 11 and 3. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Something to think about.